Okay, welcome. I'm going to give you a very quick tour of the um, new theme uh, for the Ambit manual. Um, just like previous Tiddly manuals, uh, I'm viewing this in Firefox browser. Um, but once I've opened the manual, which will look something like that when you first open it, um, I don't need my back and forward buttons in the, in the um, browser. In fact, I don't need anything at the top of the browser. Um, it's a bit of a distraction. Um, so what I do on a PC is I click F11 and if I do that now you'll see what happens. It just tucks the browser away and makes it all full screen. Um, you can do the same in uh, Macs um, and I can't remember quite which button you have to press um, and that serves you right for having a lovely Mac. Um, but anyway, you can find a way of doing that. Um, now, let's have a quick look at the, uh, the desktop. This is the desktop. Pages look a bit like that. We call them tiddlers in this particular software. Sorry about that. Um, pages have a very interesting little panel called Show References and Info. So every page has um, a whole lot of material about that page and how it relates to other bits of material in the, um, in the manual. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when you click on links, there's some diagrams, and you can click on bits of this diagram. They're actually links, but let's find some ordinary links. They're normally in red. So current versions of the manual. I'm kind of interested in that. I want to, I want to learn about using the Tiddly manual. That's a very useful idea. Um, oh, there's information here about uh, all kinds of other stuff that's been being written. That's uh, all the material that's changing. Um, now, look what's happening as I click these. Um, who's this manual for? As I click a link. Um, what you'll notice is that it doesn't immediately open the page in front of me. This is because people said that they found it uh, off-putting when they were reading a piece of text. They'd click a link and suddenly they'd be in a different place and they would lose where they were. Instead, as I read and I find stuff that I'm interested in, who wrote this rubbish? Um, I click and um, those pages are being opened up, but actually they're being opened up kind of right down here. So those pages have lined up on my reading list um, down the bottom. Um, and what you saw before, um, clicked on authors, they f that the link flies up and this little number will add. Each time I open a page, you'll find that that changes. So I know I've got five pages opened um, on my uh, desktop at the moment. And this is what we call the currently open list. So I can either scroll down from pages using the, the scroll on the side of the page, or I can use, uh, I've got a wheel on my mouse because that's the kind of guy I am. So I can click up and down using the wheel, or if I'm lazy and I just want to flick back and forward to things, I can click on the li this list and just go up and down and see who, uh, see what pages there are. If I decide that the authors are frankly too dull, I just can kill that page by clicking the um, clicking the little X beside it. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, I may come across a, a one or two or a, a number of pages that I think these are just exactly what my friend uh, Desmond or whoever it is uh, uh, would be finding really useful. So I can click this little camera. In the old version of the manual, we call that the snapshot button, and it used to be somewhere kind of up, up there getting in the way. We've tucked it here, it's a little camera thing, and if I click that, um, what it does is it generates a little address which will open up just these three pages. So I'm gonna just show you the rest of the browser now. Here's the um, address bar for where the browser sends you. Okay, if I click the um, button now, just watch what happens there. It's not that exciting, but what it does is it generates um, an address that the computer will read. So if I now right click, copy, and I send that address in an email to any of my friends, um, it will just open up those three pages. So it's a little bit like using this large volume of pages in the manual as a kind of filing cabinet of worksheets that help me to share material with other people. There's a contents panel. I can click on a plus sign and that, that shows me the sub contents in um, in material. All right, so um, there's lots and lots of material. A lot of it will be not relevant for a particular person at a particular time, but there's plenty of ways to browse this through. Pages that I have opened up 
get recorded here. So again, I'm not interested in that history because if that history just shows that I've been on this ambit theme tiddly space, that happens to be the address that I'm at at the moment to show you this new theme. Okay, um, that's not helpful to me, the, the, the browser history. Hence, I click F11 and shut it away. That's where my history gets things, and I can always pull something back um, by uh, um, clicking on that list. Okay, and there's a search engine which I can just put in anger when I get frustrated and I can go and get some anger management help um, from uh, 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 here. Okay, going back to that panel again, you can see, oh look, there's another manual with a different version of this page. Uh, and if I click on that, I find it's the Ambit Casus. Casus is the Cambridgeshire Adolescent Substance Use Service. If I click on that, it opens another tab. There's the two tabs, okay. Uh, this at the moment looks pretty frightful. Uh, hopefully in a month or two's time, they might start looking like ordinary web pages, but you can hold them up and you can see that cases have added a little bit of extra stuff on their page. They've said, see also the Casus Anger Management Workbook. Hmm, that might be interesting if I'm needing to kind of work on my uh, anger a bit more, uh, or indeed the anger of any of my clients. Uh, final bit that I want to show you, I've toggled the sidebar away, we're bored of that now. Um, we're in what we call browsing mode. So it's really just for looking through stuff. You can download stuff that's that's there too, um, but I'm not logged in. Um, I am a member of this particular, what we call space or wiki. So I can um, log in. When I log in, it actually refreshes the whole page so you'll see the page kind of reappear uh, right back at the beginning again. Um, and I'm now logged in as uh, myself. And it means that I now get some other options. I can go into the edit mode. And that just adds this little button. I'll show you that disappear. It's extremely interesting to see a button appear and disappear. Uh, there you are. Uh, and when I click the edit button, it's like opening the bonnet of the page. And I can then edit uh, content. So if you're editing content in your local manual, you're not changing the content that we curate at the Anna Freud Center. What you're, op what you're doing is you're overwriting our original page with your improved, locally attuned, um, and uh, you know, quite possibly better page than ours. And you'll be sharing that with the community of teams who are using uh, Ambit Diddly Manuals. So uh, please uh, have a look around. Uh, we hope that you find it easier to um, uh, use and more intuitive. If you want to give us any feedback, put feedback into the search bar and you'll see there's a page called Feedback Please. We are true to our word. We really would like your feedback. Um, it gives you just a little bit of um, a questionnaire it's using this thing called Survey Monkey. Tell us which tiddly manual you're using. This is an Ambit manual, isn't it? And it really will take minutes uh, for you to give uh, as much detail as you can, please, on stuff that you like, stuff that you don't like, stuff that you'd like to um, uh, offer as an improvements. Uh, we really would like to get your feedback, so please give that. And um, that, as they say, is, um, is that. I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you.